<laughs> joined the rounds that I straight from school at 18 and I went into the signal office. That would have been um, 43, wouldn't it? Because I was only two years in when the war was over. So that's, that would be right, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. So um, <clears throat> went into the signal office and that was every ship that came up the lock had to be uh, registered and we had to take the signal and there was a code so we had to to let them come up come in and uh, i wanted to be a visual signal then so i had to train for that but the war was over and i never became qualified so i was still in the the office but going out the orlick had a signal post with the oldest lamp you flash the light the morse code and uh, Great point at the Orlick was the great point at Hennes Bay was the other one. I had to go register up at Queen Street was the recruiting office, and I had to go up there and get my unit. Pollock Dock is the Caroline was the ship that supplied the uniforms. Funny enough, now it's become you know proper ship that people visit. That was the supply deco, uh, depot in that time, and you got your uniform. But you got two suits, two navy suits, a jacket and skirt. And I think they had four white blouses with detached collars. You had to s send them to the laundry to get them. I sent them into the laundry. And you got a duffel coat. You got a, a, if you were out at night, you got a duffel coat if you were out signalling. But I had a lovely navy heavy winter coat, round coat, and a Burberry. You remember Burberry's at school? <laughs> well, you don't, but we had Burberry's at school. And uh, you were very well supplied with right down to your brushes and shoe polish, everything, and black tights, black shoes. But uh, you know, you and your your hat in the summertime. You had a white cap put over the top if you had for the summertime, and the black tie. So you no, know, it was it was a nice uniform. It was comfortable. Mm. And I was just looking there when I left the Rens, they gave me twelve pounds clothing allowance. That was to dress me. Could you imagine what I get for twelve pounds? <laughs> How they pay tights? Yes, they give you twelve pounds allowance. That was your clothing allowance. Well, you weren't paid very well anyway. It was very small. Yes, I think it was. Was it six pounds? I remember giving my mother four pounds, and I kept two pounds for myself. You know, that was it. That was your pay. But you know, you have to work out the value of money. Was that weekly? Surely. Couldn't yeah. have been six pounds a month. Couldn't have been. Yeah. No. But you see, you, in those days, back to shillings and pence, yeah. you could have got an order at a grocery shop for 12 shillings. That's 60p now. You were given vouchers and you could get some civilian clothes. But I would love to have been in the Land Army and I thought I could join the new Land Army in Northern Ireland. So and that was my choice then to go to the Rend because... Uh, I saw myself on a farm in Jogpush, you yeah. know. <laughs> but there's England, there was no, the farmers here, we had no conscription here, so the men didn't have to go to the farms, we were all right. Knew the Morse code could have been in the Girl Guides, so just to help, you know, the, yeah. just shows you how good, so it was a start. The light flashing, the long flash for O and the short for S, you know, doing it, just doing it. Did, did, did. If you did it on a tapping thing, it was did, did, did. Da da da, dit dit dit. That was when you're doing it on, and they did like a tapping thing, and yeah. you, you read it. But we were, it was the lights, you were doing a short flash or a long flash. It took yeah. time, but then you see the war came to an end, and that's why I never got, I was only in two years. So the war came to an end. But in Belfast Lock, there was 41 ships in Belfast Lock before D Day, and you could have gone, jumped from deck to deck across to Larn, you know across the Whitehead. It was so thick with the ships and I was on duty the night that they left and we didn't even know where they were going. That's how secret it yeah. was kept. We were all signalled out but we didn't know where they were going. And the morning when you woke up and saw the lock, not a ship in it, it was unbelievable. No. But there was one big American in the Navy and you see I'm quite fat cheeks at that stage <laughs> and he used to catch my cheek and say, hi chubby wabby. <laughs> And I said, George had taught me jiu-jitsu in case anybody attacked me. And he taught me if you did that and that, you can throw a person, put them down the floor. Yeah. So this big fella, I just did that, and he was off balance and he went down. Well, he couldn't get up for laughing. He couldn't. <laughs> so every time I went round with any signals to the different officers, uh, they'd say, watch her, watch her. She'll have you on the floor. <laughs> I always remember that. He was a big giggly fella, you know.
haven't got me chubby wobby anymore. Lady Dufferin held dances up in Clandeboy Lodge for the Americans. And of course, there's so many, no women, so they had to send up wrens. And I was up to two or three of those dances. Those were very nice dances. The American band, that's what was lovely. The American band came down Main Street every afternoon at four o'clock. And uh, real jazzy. And it the town was alive.